Lean is our next student. He attends South Winnesheet CSD in Kelmer, and he is the son of Sandra and Kelly Lean. Trick V's project is on nutrient management for better crops and better water quality. Until this last year, I thought that Norman Borlaug was Iowa's greatest humanitarian. This man saved billions of lives, yet few people have heard of him. Now I know, however, Iowa produced another great humanitarian, President Herbert Hoover. He is known as a president that served during one of the darkest times in American history, known as the Great Depression, but he too was one of the great humanitarians of the world, yet few people know this. It seems that some of the greatest people in the world <coughs> made a difference without doing it for the glory. My name is Trigby Lean, and I would like to tell you about my project, which has been shaped by the two men I just spoke about. My mission is to prove that land stewardship is a top priority and to educate the public that it is our moral obligation to take care of the land, water, and trees. By sampling, the producers will only put on the soil what is needed and where it is needed. Thus, improving the soil and the plant without doing harm to the environment. My program started out with just soil sampling, but has branched out because I have learned there are many other needs and aspects to plant health and nutrition. I am only briefly able to briefly mention the highlights of what I am doing. Stewardship is everyone's responsibility. My goal is to educate the public that it is our moral obligation to take care of the <coughs> land, water, and trees. I'm learning about soil stewardship and crop management, and in turn, I am sharing my findings and educating in others so that we can feed a starving world. I cannot, feed, or I, I cannot educate the whole world by myself, but I can start a learning chain. Organizing and leading are two qualities that President Hoover excelled at, and he set an example that I am trying to follow. I started a soil sampling assistance program in 2015. The program only charges for the cost of the soil analysis. And the idea is that once one producer is shown the benefit, that they will continue to soil sample and assist funding to continue the program. Each year, my goal is to double the amount of producers from the previous year. Even though soil sampling is the main objective, the program offers many additional services that tie in with stewardship and soil testing. Parts of the program include soil sampling, how to reach and understand soil analysis, crop scouting, and how to use the results of the findings, public education, and other aspects of stewardship practices. Why is land stewardship important? A steward is a person who is given the responsibility to protect our natural resources. We as producers need to increase production with what resources we have. This means we need to preserve the soil so it remains healthy and is better able to support more crop growth. Higher yields means more nutrients come out of the soil. These nutrients have to be replaced or we are just raping the soil. In addition, the fencing of streams, rivers, and ponds to improve water quality is essential, as well as the controlling of runoff by planting cover crops and filter strips. Plants account for 80% of the human diet. Crop improvements account for 50% of the world's food. Is it possible to grow more food and look after the environment? Growing more food using fewer resources is my main goal. Soil sampling is a valuable tool for anyone with land as it determines the inputs needed for efficient and economic production. A soil test will ensure the application of enough fertilizer to meet the requirements of the crop while taking advantage of the nutrients that are already present in the soil. Keeping soil nutrients in balance also improves beneficial microbes in the soil. Things that can be soil sampled include a garden, fields large and small, baseball fields, yards and gardens, and any place you'll find soil. 
There are some days I have a lot of character. <laughs> Why is it critical to understand soil analysis? As you can see, there's a lot of information contained in a soil report. In order to properly read a soil nutrient report, a person needs to be taught, or else they need to find somebody who is reliable at it. By knowing what your soil needs, you prevent groundwater contamination, and understanding your report allows you to keep your plants healthy, which in turn helps them fight off drought and pests, and plant disease as well. Stewardship requires it. Crop scouting is the process of walking through a growing area and observing the conditions of the soil and plants. Crop scouting keeps you on top of conditions and helps you catch and diagnose problems early and allows for timely corrective action before major crop losses occur. Some of the things we were looking here were at the root mass. This is uh, different nitrogen levels in the corn different stock strength and patterns in the corn, and as well as nitrogen usage here. And then later on we would look at stock strength and overall bean foods, as well as pests to the plant. It's very important to find an agronomist that is willing to help you throughout this process as well. And soil sampling ties in greatly with soil mapping. Public education is a very important thing because we have to feed 200,000 more people every day, so it's important that growers learn to use our natural resources more wisely. It takes 500 years to replace 25 millimeters of topsoil. I have held public open houses to talk about how my services can help everyone. I have spoken to churches, groups, and even schools to spread the word and to share my knowledge. By sharing with others, I too have learned. I have met some amazing people along the way who have taught and encouraged me. Plant science is looking after our planet, feeding a growing population, and helping rural communities progress. And successful people are like a turtle on a fence post. They didn't get there by themselves. <laughs> Other aspects of stewardship practices include changing tillage practices while moving towards reduced and no-till, becoming more energy efficient and saving our natural resources, increasing organic matter, preventing nutrient loss, and protecting groundwater. I will blog about stewardship, crops, equipment, and whatever else I find helpful to share at trigbytestplot.blogspot.com. I also have a weather station and plot camera which can be viewed at www.wunderground.com and look for Castelia Crop Cam. Problems that I encountered in the program are human nature. We want the most for the least, and the fear of ridicule from others. And changing practices is a hard thing to do for many farmers. And for a lot of producers, if you can't see the problem, it doesn't exist. Producers older than myself do not always take the program seriously until I can prove what I am talking about. The current we need to feed 200,000 more people every day. My current status, my goal was to assist five to 10 producers and double that each year. As of today, I have worked with eight producers. Six of these have asked for assistance next year. I have increased my pool of agronomists that I can call upon for assistance and advice. I feel that my project is currently on track and will continue and I will continue with getting the word out and speaking with other producers. As I stated, the goal is to double each year the amount of producers assisted. I plan on running the program throughout college, and eventually local FFA chapters will begin to assist, as this is a non-profit educational program and is ideal for the FFA to eventually take over. My eventual goal is that every FFA chapter in Iowa will be trained in the program and that each chapter can assist the producers in their own area. Thus, Iowa will be covered. Everyone is a winner if you own land or not. Stewardship helps with land, air, water, and trees, things that we all use and enjoy. 
I'd like to thank the following organizations and individuals for helping support my program. The Herbert Hoover Presidential Foundation, Dr. Elwin Taylor and Iowa State University, agronomist Jeff Berkeley, Pat Tekip, Aaron Schrader, Tony Pladencool, Tim Nearing, and Farmers Union Co-op in Ashton, Iowa. My parents, Kelly and Sandra Lean, and the Decora FFA for agreeing to continue the future of the program. I think that my whole project and goals can be summed up in this quote from President Herbert Hoover. Thank you for allowing me this opportunity to share my program. I hope that in coming years you will hear about my program and how it is spread to help others. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, having been born and raised on a farm, I, I appreciate your, your comments. Questions? I thank you so much for uh, appearing before us in official dress. I, I appreciate that from your FFA chapter. Uh, are you a, uh, a, a chapter, uh, do you have a, a position in your chapter? I uh, did. Uh, two years ago I was the reporter and then this past year I was the vice president. Okay, great. How about for the district? Uh, for the district, I've applied um, for positions, but there are so many people that try for it as yes, well. For sure. just, I'll try again this year. Good, good, yes, uh, please do. Uh, thank you so much for um, letting people know that we farmers are out there mm -hmm. and we're, we're doing the soil testing, we're doing the grid mapping. Now, how do you see yourself um, being able to make a presentation to farmers and because there's already private industries that are doing this yes yes and so how can you and coincide with the private industries that are out there tell me tell me you're working with that kind of a group well uh, I hold the field day but aside from that I go out and meet with individual farmers and um, I hear from other farmers um, which farmers I might need to go meet with and I sort of tailor what I'm going to say depending on their operation um, depending on if they raise beef cattle or pigs or if they just do corn or if they're in a rotation cycle and so I can um, I, I like to incorporate a lot of the private um, companies in with it um, one of the things that I was taught was that once you find a soil lab that you like to stick with it mm -hmm. that way um, they all have somewhat different standards that way yes. um, you can keep it as accurate as possible throughout your records and findings so that's one of the ways I can do that mm -hmm. perfect is this one of your SAE projects no it is not oh, because you got to have money with the SAE thing right yes oh shoot because that uh, looks like you're doing a great job thank you so along that same line you're involving people in FFA right now too, right? Yes. yes so that when they go on, if they become farmers, they'll have learned the value of what you're doing by having practiced it themselves. They'll learn soil sampling. Yes. Um, a, a few of the people in my class just, you know, blow it off, you know, because in their mind, it's the machinery and the livestock, not not necessarily what you plant. But other people are, are getting it, and you know, maybe they might not farm, but in the future, or maybe they will, but at least they're going and telling their parents about it. You can go on to my blog and find out more, or come to my field day, or call me up and, and ask me about stuff like that. I think it's excellent. I'm sorry, I'm doing it again. Um, with your going to, uh, went to even soil sample people's lawns, mm -hmm. you know, the baseball fields, that showing in your presentation that it's important to soil sample everything. So, how do you convince the person with the, uh, the lawn and the baseball field to do a soil sample? Well, uh, for instance, our, uh, our school has, it's in the center of town and our football field and baseball field are right next to each other and that is the old town dump. Oh. So um, it, they completely took everything out and remodeled it. Uh, last year they redid everything. And, but there are different portions of the baseball field that, you know, there was one spot that looked fantastic and then closer to the field it looked terrible. 
So uh, they asked me to come in and soil sample to see what type of fertilizer they are needing to apply, how much, um, you know, if they need to maybe try a different type of grass that would work better in that nutrient and, um, environment and that uh, different soil type. Great, thank you. That's, that's great. How often do you post on your blog about this? Um, it, it varies quite a bit. Um, throughout the winter, um, it's not as much as in the summer when I'm um, when the plants are growing and I'm able to post updates. I uh, posted just last week and I'm planning on posting probably tomorrow or the day after that about uh, the final results of my test plot that I've held this year and along with some of the field work we've been doing recently and what we're planning for in the future. Cool. Have you had the experience of going to a field, testing it, having a really good advice to give to the farmer, the owner, who says no. What is your approach in that situation? Well, um, recently, um, we had, uh, earlier this year, I started with tissue sampling uh, with the corn, and because we couldn't start soil sampling yet because the, the plants were still pulling nutrients from the ground, and um, we went and looked at a field, probably one of the best fields I had seen that year, and you, it, uh, the stand was beautiful, nice looking plants, but then he went out and combined and his yield was terrible. And he, he, do, he does corn on corn and he's, not, he's never soil sampled before. And so I went out there and uh, he had a very open mind towards it. You know, he had, we had taken him to field days before that uh, put on by the Hefty Brothers, which I work with, they're an amazing resource for me. And he, he was, he was sort of hesitant at first, but now he's given me the go ahead and I just soil sampled the uh, 50 acre field for him last week. I see, um, I see this as a kind of a moral issue for you. Your, your first words in the first few minutes of your presentation were, you know, suggested that this was kind of a moral imperative that you're doing this it, it, you know, not only for this generation, but for future generations. Talk about that a little bit. How did you come to that uh, point of view? Well, I see a lot of farms that um, I know, a farm that my dad grew up near, uh, he prided on never having fertilized the farm his whole career. And yeah, he, he was able to get by, he always got a crop, but it was a good farm and now it's one of the worst, it's a terrible farm in that neighborhood. We aren't going to get more soil anytime soon. It takes 500 years to get 25 millimeters of topsoil. And so we have to make it last. We can't just mine the resources out of it we want and then move on to another field. And with, we're losing more and more acres of land each year to urban development, um, erosion, uh, various things such as that. So we have to really take care of what we have right now because you know we have to feed more people and we're going to have to take a closer look at what we're doing to make it all work. Thank you very much. Anyone else with a question? Well, thank you for your presentation. We appreciate your work and your time very much.